you uh, get to do the little pop up party VBS invasion of last night? Of course I did. Mac came with me too. Oh, did he? Of course it helped when I said, hey, free snow cones. <laughs> I know. I'm like, Kona Ice. The Kona Ice people. <laughs> we love teaming up with them. Yes. All no. those blue and pink tongues and red oh, tongues. Oh, absolutely. Faces covered in, you know, uh-huh. red, purple yellow sugar juice it was good no it was really fun and the kids are just adorable and you know ross our intern yes we call him ross the intern ross the intern the intern he uh he was there putting on little klrc tattoos on people on the little little kids that's so fun And, and he was so good with those little kids but i was just like oh my goodness this guy he is just this charismatic magnetic magnetic young man right he's like he looks like james he dean totally looks but like with james like dean. the heart of billy graham yeah. you know what i'm saying <laughs> actually that is the perfect description of ross i mean he's just awesome and, and there were two moms moms there and they were literally showing ross pictures of their daughters <laughs> well because they would love to to connect him with and i was like yes i get what? it if i had a daughter ross would be the chosen man for for my daughter we were talking yesterday uh we have noticed a significant uptick in the interest of pens at the klrc booth from teenage girls <laughs> It's, it's Probably amazing. writing their phone numbers those, and giving them to Ross. Those KLRC <laughs> pens, like everybody wants them now, especially if you're a teenage girl. Right, yeah. It appears that maybe they were coming to see Ross There's possibly a good, too. Good chance, good Just chance. But it, it was a lot of fun though. And the kiddos, like I said, they were so sweet and adorable. And I, we just had a great time. Yeah. So. Well, thank you, Boulder Ridge Fellowship, mm-hmm. for letting us come and invade the VBS crew last night. And Kona Eyes, always bringing it, which is awesome. Oh, and Bo- Boulder Fellowship, they also gave us these, it's called Walking Tacos. Have you ever had Walking Tacos? No. I mean, I heard the word taco and I was like, I'm in, I don't know what that means, but anything with taco in it, I'm all about it. And so we went inside and they have like little Dorito bags that you eat Doritos. Okay. Um, And so they open those up. And then they stuff like chili inside there oh, that's with the brilliant. Doritos. And then you can add whatever you want. So you're eating out of that bag. Like, you know, anyway, walking tacos. Okay. It was really good. We need to try this. I know. The KLRC Morning Show with Mark and Christy. 90.9 KLRC. 90.9 KLRC. Good morning. It's Mark and Christy. So my son Keegan turned 20 yesterday. Oh. He's our little filmmaker studying film mm-hmm. here at JBU. So in honor of his birthday yesterday, we're like, all right, we're getting the popcorn, made the root beer floats, oh. and we'll watch a movie yeah. in your honor, right? And so we let him pick, and in classic fashion, he finds this like movie that none of us had ever heard of <laughs> yeah, before. It's obscure, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and it was based on a book I can't remember. It has something to do with like the fox, the horse, the mole, <laughs> and the okay. boy, or something okay. like that. But but it was super good. Like it was this kind of animated children's story that was filled with all these really meaningful lines along the way. Yeah. And there's one moment where, I can't remember even which one, one of the animals looks to the boy. They're sitting there and he's like, hey, what do you want to be when you grow up? And the boy pauses for a moment and he says, kind. And I thought, Mm. that's a great line. Yeah. We get so caught up in like, what do you want to do? Right. Instead of the, who do you want to be? Yeah. And just even thinking about spiritually, okay, okay. Beyond all the like stuff I could go do, what would it look like for me to grow in love and kindness? That could be pretty cool. It's really good. Ready for some good news? We are too. Here's your positive difference story of the day. So I read this story a mom had shared online. She said a few months ago, my husband and I were having conversations about finances. Because of some difficult circumstances, things were getting really tight. We've always struggled a bit, but things were really starting to get tough. And um, we didn't know at the time, but our four and a half year old son was taking note of our conversation in another room. And about a week later, we were running errands all day as a family. I was tired and I made the comment to my husband about how I could sure use a coffee from one of my favorite places. 
And he reminded me we decided that that wasn't in our budget. Mm. So it was one of those like, okay. So she's like, yeah, I really, yeah, I can't put any money on my Starbucks card right now. Then my son asked me for my Starbucks card. Something that he does every once in a while. He likes playing with old cards, gift mm-hmm. cards, those kind of things. <laughs> so she's like, okay. She hands it back to him. The kid's like, oh. she's like, doesn't really think much about it. But about a minute or two later, she heard a little voice that said, here, mommy. She said, what's that, honey? This is for you. I put dollars on your card. And there was the card with a $5 bill laying on the card. <laughs> Oh, is that not the sweetest? I love it. He had totally taken it literally. Yeah. And he's just got this heart of gold. He had to five bucks from something. He probably he took it from share. her own purse. <laughs> <laughs> Might have been, would have been a brilliant move, actually, right? She says this. Take a moment to appreciate how beautifully our children's minds work. Mm. When my husband had reminded me that we decided we couldn't put money on the card... My son just simply took it literally. But I have never had a better drink of coffee than I did that afternoon. Mm, so sweet. More importantly, it was a reminder to realize that teaching kindness to our children is such a worthwhile feat. That same little boy has told me in the past that he wanted to give all of his dollars to the man that lives on the sidewalk. And that he wants to make a lot of money someday when he grows up so he can give his dollars to other kids who don't have mommies and daddies. Wow. Just That's amazing. Liner, right? Isn't that awesome? That is our positive difference story of the day today. The KLRC Morning Show with Mark and Christy. 90.9 KLRC. So, this is like reunion week. Yesterday, Christy and I were in the studio together for the first time. Mm. Now it's all three of us. Chef and Justin. (laughs) Back together again. Welcome back. Good to see you. Good to see you too. All right. So let's do a little chaplain chat. Okay. Um, I know Christy and I were talking about this earlier this week. Um, You've been in this like, okay, first world problems. Don't get frustrated. Right. Like, how do I live without expectations? But Mm -hmm. we were talking about that and like... Can you live without expectations? Mm-hmm. Like, when does that when is that a good thing, and when does that become a bad right. thing? Right. When is it healthy? When is it unhealthy? I mean, I think if you live with too much, you know, expectation on other people, like too many expectations, then you can kind of be in this place of just unhappiness. Right. Yeah. You're just frustrated all the time. I have been thinking about this, going, you know, you just you don't need to have so many expectations on others. Like Mm -hmm. give people a break and you're not so perfect. You know, you're not so great. So get over yourself and get over this. Mm -hmm. And, and then I'm like, well, where do you draw the line? What's healthy versus unhealthy? Um, You know, so I I just wanted to ask you about that. What are your thoughts? So we do what we always do. Let's just ask Chaplain Justin. (laughs) (laughs) I'll throw my hat in the ring. Okay. Um, uh, I think expectations is a pretty broad term. Mm-hmm. And so I, I like this gut feeling, this intuition about balance. Because uh, in some ways we can't live well without expectations. And so I would say like healthy expectations would be something like um, kind of the term boundaries. And so you set up healthy boundaries around certain things uh, for yourself personally or relationships so that you have a foundation, say, in a relationship that, hey, we, we agreed upon this. And if there's a falling short in that, we can repair it, mm-hmm. you know, because we have a mutual expectation or boundary is yeah. a common word. And we've kind it. of all agreed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, so we have a basis for accountability and growth and flourishing those relationships. On the other side, expectations, you could say, you know, a more negative connotation would be like assumptions where I'm assuming, say, the worst of someone and so that's going to color how I relate to them. Mm. Right. That's kind of those unhealthy, maybe expectations, or I might assume the best in a way that's not realistic. And so I'm chronically disappointed by people or yeah. situations. Um, yeah. And so I, I would say that those, those two things might help. Um, and, and ultimately I personally would want to live in a state of just openness and honesty, which would say, 
I understand we're fallen human beings. We're all in this <laughs> falling short. So I'm not going to be surprised when I see it. In fact, there can be compassion of, oh, yeah, I get that because I'm in that too. Mm. I'm just open to that. And when uh, I'm really blessed by someone, it's kind of like a pleasant surprise. It's a gift. It's like, oh, I could be but grateful. without that openness, you don't have that room for surprise, a pleasant surprise, um, or just that understanding and honesty about, yeah, we, we humans are not always at our best. In fact, we can be a pretty... Um, hard on each other Mm. Um, and so yeah so maybe balance those expectations boundaries assumptions and then just the degree of openness and honesty i think well i'm glad that god doesn't have like tremendous expectations on me (laughs) um i'm glad he accepts me for who i am and and how i am Um, but at the same time that also makes me want to serve him more living Mm. in that way too I think, isn't that the beauty of the good news, right? Mm-hmm. That, that Jesus fulfills all those expectations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so that where we fall short, we get to just be like, oh, okay, God, I can rest yeah. in this. And I can offer other people the same kind of grace because I know how badly I need it at the same yeah. time. For sure. That can be repaired and we can fall down and get back up again. Mm-hmm. Keep it's on really, really good. Yeah. All right. Thanks for the chaplain chat. You're welcome. The KLRC Morning Show with Mark and Christy. 90.9 KLRC. We were doing a little chaplain chat with Chaplain Justin. We were talking about unhealthy and healthy expectations. Mm-hmm. Those expectations, they can, they can get you. They in can. In relationships and circumstances. Yeah. So I was talking to a woman. She's kind of like my mentor. And we were having a conversation. And I was just, I was ranting. I was going through probably about 10 different things. That were getting on my nerves. <laughs> right. And it was all about people not doing what I think they should do because they said they would do them and they didn't do mm, them. Okay. Yeah. From, let's say, a swimming pool service to first world problems, by the way, to my gas tank thing not coming open. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And you can even fill up your... Yeah and, yeah. and people not helping. and But someone did come to my rescue in that. Um, and so I don't have expectations on them. Uh <laughs> But just different, you know, things like, hey, someone says they'll be here this day. I wait. They don't show up. And so it just kind of right. frustrate it. And when I, you start piling up, yeah. like the angst can right. be real. And and I literally listed off probably 10 things. And she goes, yeah, those are a lot of things out of your control. <laughs> She's like, people are out of your control, aren't they? Oh. And I was like, Eat. ouch. Yeah. <laughs> And so we, we had a really good conversation about expectations. Mm. And then I was reading a little bit more about it um, because I needed to. Yeah. And uh, I just wanted to share this with our listening family because I, I think we all need these words. Um, it says we tend to get disappointed due to our, our enormously high expectations, which, mm-hmm. by the way, we can also put those on ourselves. Right. Which can also create other things like shame or guilt and that sort of thing, too. Okay. Now, there is healthy guilt. That's a whole other topic, but I'm just saying. Okay, so whether it's relationships, events, people, work, et cetera, disappointments get us angry and sad because things didn't turn out the way we imagined them mm-hmm. to. Okay, so when we ab- embrace the true, quote, no expectations, that no disappointments meaning, we begin to live fully in the present. Mm-hmm. So if you just don't have expectations. Yeah. You could just enjoy the present moment. It says our lives are filled with acceptance, gratitude, and love when we're in that space. We stop fighting things that are out of our control and focus our power on what we can control, our own mindset, emotions, and actions. And that's when the serenity prayer, and this is what my mentor and I, we talk about all the time. Yeah. And she'll remind me, she goes, what's that serenity prayer again? And I'd be like, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Like people. Like people. The courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Mm. And I will say, I am thankful when people don't have expectations on Christy. Right. Because yeah. I can fail people many times. Yeah. And so there's also that part too, and to recognize my own self-centeredness when it comes to expectations I put on other people, because you know, yeah, I'm not all that good at following through sometimes either. But amazing how we can yeah. forget to look in the mirror when totally. we're 
wrapped up in everybody else's stuff, right? Mm-hmm. The KLRC Morning Show with Mark and Christy. 90.9 KLRC. Zach Williams and Dolly looking for you and the positive difference. I love that we have a God that will run to us when we say, hey, I'm ready to turn. Mm. I'm ready to be embraced. Um, even though he's not a God that runs a whole lot. I just We were talking yesterday about my sloth sabbatical. <laughs> yes. Right? And I mentioned that the week in Costa Rica was amazing. Uh, and it was kind of one of those like, oh, okay, well, God, yeah, you did all this cool stuff. And I got to I rest and unplug. And it's, hard, it's easy to do when you're at this resort and all that. But the second week was just as powerful. And it, I was at home. I was walking some trails in northwest Arkansas, yeah, sitting on chilling. my back porch. Mm-hmm. But I had a moment that was totally unexpected. I had a text message from a guy. He's been part of my life for, I don't know, 15 years. I think we've been friends. And one of those, like, wish we could have more time together than we do. It just mm-hmm. tends to be kind of sporadic. But every time we're together, it's so rich. He's one of those... It's kind of like Chaplain Justin. He's just super wise. Mm-hmm. I was one of those. I always feel bad when we leave because I'm like, I don't know that I got anything to offer, but you just filled me up, man. And uh, and last week, I got a text message from him. He said, hey, I saw that you're on sabbatical. And do you want to get together? And so we did. We just sat in this little place chatting. And he said something that was super powerful to me. Because uh, we were talking about slowing down mm-hmm. and how frustrating when things are slow can be right. at times in our souls. I don't know anything about that, but go ahead. <laughs> right. <laughs> Whatever. He said, isn't it so interesting that pretty much through even the accounts that we have of Jesus, it's all by him walking. Mm. And you think, well, what, what, like, why didn't he run? Like, why wasn't he just in a hurry to get to the next city to do the next thing, whether it was the next miracle or, mm-hmm. uh, you know, give the next thing he needed to say or, solve whatever yeah instead he's walking and we kind of get this sense that he, like he wasn't really in a hurry yeah and he reminded me he said now there's one point where he talks about running he has that story when he talks about the prodigal the the son who went off to do life his own way and decided and realized that wasn't going to work out so well and he turns around and the father runs to him mm. and forgiveness. So he's like, yeah, we can, we have a God though. He'll run. He'll run to you. Like that looking for you song that we just played. But for the most part, Jesus tends to slowly walk and we, he invites us to walk with him. And I'm like, man, there's something to that. Okay, God, you, you might take more time than I would on my own. You might heal me a little slower than I would choose to, or you might get this done or whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. Because you tend to be more of a God who walks and then runs all the time. And I'm like, mm-hmm. man, I so never thought too. about that. And and the fact that also as he walks, he walks beside us. And I know for me, mm. I tend to run ahead. <laughs> me too. And so it, this this me whole, I, I appreciate your words so much because it's just reminding me like, no, you don't have to run ahead. Uh-huh. God is patient and he's slow. But he's always there, and he's with us, and he's trustworthy, mm. and and you can you can hang with him and just so wait. Good. The KLRC Morning Show with Mark and Christy, ninety point nine KLRC. Happy birthday! This is just so exciting. Let's keep this party going. This is your birthday song. It isn't very long. Hey, happy birthday! All right, hats are on, candles are lit. Let's do this. All right. Happy birthday to Salem Cannon, the big one today in Gravit. I'm sure Salem just couldn't get to his phone this morning. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, Landon Elam, nine years old in Gentry. Sarah Burton and Bentonville having a birthday today, as well as Jack Mabry turning the big one seven, 17 years old today in Lowell. All right. Also, happy birthday to Ethan Nichols, teenager today in Salem Springs, turning 13. Woo-hoo. Mark Daniels and Rogers and Tyler Mitchell in Lincoln turning 15 today. All right. Happy birthday, everybody. That's the Marketplace Grill birthday bash. Our favorite part is we get to surprise somebody. Hello. Hi, good morning. This is Mark and Christy with KLRC Radio. Is Sarah there? This is. Sarah, we hear it's your birthday Happy today. birthday! <laughs> Thank you. Are you, you got any big plans today? I'm doing VBS at my church. Oh, that's cool. Ooh, okay. What church is that? 
First Baptist Bentonville. Awesome. That's so cool. What a fun week. That's pretty awesome. Have you done that before or is this first year? Nope, I've done it before. Okay, okay so you're, so you're a pro, huh? Yes. Well, hey, could we give you a gift certificate to go celebrate your birthday at the Marketplace Grill on us? Yes, that would be great. All right. Well, we're going to hook you up. Um, We appreciate you just for listening to KLRC and all the work that you're doing there at Bentonville at the church. That's amazing. And uh, we hope you have a fabulous birthday today. Okay, I will. Thank you.